Hello and welcome back everyone to Universe Sandbox. I'm Spike Viper and today we're going to be jumping into it. I feel like everyone says jumping in, but nobody actually jumps into the game. Alright, let's jump over to Dart. This is the cool thing humanity has accomplished recently. We, we got a spacecraft and we chucked it at an asteroid in the hopes of changing its orbital period which means you know slowing it down or speeding it up in this case i believe it was slowing it down um with the intent of changing its orbit now this is kind of insane because look at the the, the tiny size of the dart spacecraft compared to this body i mean that kind of insane look at the difference and the fact that we can make an impact Okay, let's watch as it hits, and let's click on this and look at the speed it's going. <coughs> so we have 0 0.169 meters per second, and then after the dart probe hits, we're going to have... Ooh, impact! Did, did it not change the speed? Okay, well, it should have. It should have changed the speed. Did it change the orbital period at least? We, we did record in real life, and it did actually change the orbital period, so uh, let's go ahead and reload and see if it actually changed. Uh, orbital period, 11.8 hours. Let's see if that's what it starts with here. Oh yeah, 11.9! So even though I didn't see the speed change, it definitely did change that orbital period there when it hit. So accurate. Very accurate. I mean, I, I would be surprised if something in this game wasn't accurate. They, they try very hard to make the simulation as accurate as possible. Unless you're a flat earther, in which case just throw it all out because you're not going to believe in, you know, any of the basis of this game in the first place. Alright, so that's awesome. I mean, the ability to defend Earth from asteroids is probably something that's not going to be used in my lifetime but you know the first time you learn how to do something it opens the gate to the future um i mean we can apply this concept to really anything like let's say we wanted to uh get rid of the moon because we don't like the moon anymore M moon more like awful Really, all you have to do to slow down a body in motion is to apply a force in the uh, opposite direction to the direction it is moving in. I mean, this is this is kind of obvious. It's kind of like implicit. You don't think about this. You know, sun's moving this way. You hit it this way to move it. But when it comes to orbital mechanics, things get a little bit more complicated because you have to remember things are kind of falling towards the thing they're orbiting but they're moving so quickly that they're falling forever they're moving the one uh vector as fast as they're falling so they never actually fall uh, there's a lot of videos that do a great job of explaining this and i'm not doing a great job of explaining this but the big idea is if we hit the moon um opposite to its current uh, direction with something with a lot of force then it should slow down hit it with this right here palace boo 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 pew all right so you can see right now that the moon is moving at uh, around a kilometer per second but you're gonna see that once it impacts here that it's going to decrease and its orbital period should decrease as well, which means it'll actually get a little bit closer to the Earth. Because the further away from a body something is, the greater its orbital period. Makes sense, right? Alright. Boom, we have impact. Can I get rid of this pain? There we go. We have impact, and you can see that that speed is decreasing. I mean, that was a very small object compared to the moon, but you can see that everything actually has changed a little bit. You can see that it slowed down a little bit as we expected. 
That's going to cause it to get a little bit... I think that's actually visibly closer to Earth on this side now. Um, that appears to be more lopsided than before. But we can go a little bit harder. It, there's two ways to increase the force of a collision, of course. We can either increase the size of the object we're throwing, or we can increase its velocity. So, for example, if I get Ceres and put its velocity up... Uh, let's, oh, that's already going really fast. I uh, have a kilometer per second. That's... I guess it's still quite a bit smaller than the moon. So let's do three. Three kilometers per second. This is going to impact the moon with quite a bit of uh, force. And we're going to see that the moon's orbital period and speed should decrease. And if we remember just how close this is to the Earth here, uh, we'll see that gets smaller. And this is all the same concept as when we threw that probe at the uh, asteroid. That was orbiting another asteroid. Kind of like an asteroid moon. I don't know what the technical term is for it. I can probably look that up. Anyways, we've got boom. You can see that the speed is now really slowing down and the orbital period dropped tremendously from that. That was uh that was dramatic. We have a lot of you know, this would already be bad because a ton of debris would be flung out to like Earth. Okay, yeah, look at the Look at the chunk we took out of that. That is a that is a huge difference. Uh, the tides would be tides would be turning, and by turning I mean really screwed up, and our lives are never going to be the same. But well, let's go ahead and do a little bit more force because remember, you know, force is going to be proportional to the velocity and the mass of the object. So let's go ahead and make that a hundred kilometers per second. Because I want to do major damage to, you know, the moon and in turn Earth. I, I kind of want the moon to fall into the Earth, which means that I need to do a lot. All right. Yeah, okay, that, that killed a ton of the speed of the moon. And now the rotational period. Oh, there we go. We've done it. We have hit the moon so hard that it has barely any any energy left to travel around the Earth. Uh, it's been slowed almost to a stop. It's going the opposite direction now, actually, but not quickly enough. Not quickly enough at all. And now it is going to fall towards the Earth because it's now being pulled in by the Earth, but it's not running away fast enough. I don't think it's going to hit the Earth, but it's going to get close enough that the tidal forces of the Earth are going to rip the moon into tiny little pieces. Uh, we're going to see this any second now. Three, two, one. We're going to see fragments just start getting ripped off of the moon. And while it's not going to be as awful for the Earth as if the moon hit the Earth, of course, this is still going to create a lot of debris that threatens the Earth. Unless it doesn't, maybe it didn't get close enough for fragments to be ripped off. Uh, it could just be because the game's trying to prevent lag as well. Ooh. There's a lot of fragments and stuff out here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quickly. In an attempt to reduce the lag, I can delete a lot of the, a lot of the stuff. It's just kind of chilling. A lot of stuff from that last collision that's just hanging around that we can clean up. Alright. How's that? That's a little bit better. Look at the moon go. Round and round we go. Eh, let's just let it fall into the earth at this point. We're going to go ahead and get the speed of the moon, and we're just going to decrease that. Ooh! Uh, it didn't collide, but it got really close, and you can see the tidal forces did actually rip it apart this time. Um, that went a little bit too quickly to see, but... Ooh! Ooh! Oh, it just completely exploded. I think they added that. I think they added complete destruction of bodies uh, when they get too much force. I'm going to test that. If so, then we're going to have to make another video on that because that'll be a lot of fun to experiment with. 
Let's see. Let's try not to get off topic too much here, but I am curious. I'm very curious. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we have super, super dramatic ripping apart of the moon just from the tidal forces, but I think, I think it may actually also, I guess it wasn't dramatic enough. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic, like right next to it. Oop. I guess not. Lots of damage, yes. Or maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna have to look at the patch notes. Anyways, let's go back to what we were saying before. The idea is really simple, uh, but it, it is incredible that we've actually managed to do it uh, with something as amazing as an asteroid. Um, firing something, especially when it's moving in, in an orbit, is very challenging. You can't You can't just fire you know, a rocket towards another planet or something. Um, if you've ever played Kerbal Space Program, there is a lot of complex math and planning that has to go into it because you're moving, Earth is moving, the other object is moving, and there's 800 other factors that, you know, affect everything. So it's pretty damn impressive. So good, good for us humanity that we managed to make that happen. And uh, our large-scale experiment with the Earth and Moon obviously doesn't apply to anything we'd want to do in the real world, but, you know, the Moon deserved it. The Moon deserved it because it ruined my trip to West Texas. More on that another time. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Good job to the DART program, it's all very exciting.